With the rising demand of tankless water heaters, contractors and builders may be wondering how to fit the venting of the tankless water heater into their project. It's flexible. You have options. You can go out of the roof. You can go out of the sidewall. You got indirect. You have direct. Today, we're going to cover those. Today, we're going to cover how to properly install the venting of a tankless water heater. So that way, number one, the safety of the end user is taken in consideration. Number two, the operation of the system is flawless. My name is Sean Marshall, East Coast Academy trainer for Navion Incorporated. And today we're gonna to go over a couple of those things to make sure your installations are safe, efficient, and profitable. Let's go take a look. There's two ways we can vent tankless water heaters. One option, I'm drawing fresh air for combustion from inside the conditioned space, all right? With that being said, we need to make sure that we have enough free space to draw air from. If not, then you can create a negative in the home and then you won't get the proper operation out of the system. One benefit of a direct vent installation is that we can save space, all right? Most of the time, we have that tank that's in that utility closet that we wanna get out of there with all the other stuff around it. We can then take that tank list, put that in that spot and directly vent the system outside. So that means our intake is being drawn from outside for combustion and we're also dumping our exhaust outside as well, making sure that we keep the distance between the two. When we're doing our direct venting, just think about it. We had that old style tank in there. We had to send that B vent all the way up to the roof. Now with tankless, we have flexibility. We can go right out of the sidewall. How much time do you think that'll save you? If I can just put the system in and then 90 right out of the sidewall with my intake and exhaust, keeping the proper specifications, a lot of time. How much money would I save you on materials? I don't have to use as much material to accomplish the same mission, the same goal. Now, National Gas Fuel Co. advises that we need to be a minimum of 12 inches vertical and a minimum of 12 inches horizontal between our intake and our exhaust. But that's just a minimum. Let's give it a little bit more distance. Let's make sure that we eliminate any possibility of recirculating exhaust back into our intake. And if we do that, we'll ensure that this system lasts the lifespan that it was designed to, and also that the end user gets to enjoy the quality of tankless that they were looking for. Let's go see what else we got. All right, and this is our condensing product that can be field converted to propane. Now, condensing means efficiency. Efficiency as in 98, 99% efficient. And we can tell that efficiency by the temperatures of our exhaust. Now here in our primary heat exchanger, we start off at around 1,650 degrees. By the time we reach our exhaust, we're down to 80, 90 degrees. In that case, we can use a different type of material outside of B vent, PVC we can use. We can also use polypropylene because of the lower temperatures. So then we get into definitely saving costs and a lot easier to deal with. Not as heavy, easier to cut, easier to handle and manage. All right, now let's check out another affordable option or a more affordable option, which is a non-condensing product line, all right? Now with non-condensing, our burner still burns up to 1,650 degrees, all right? By the time it leaves the exhaust, it's about three, 400 degrees. All right, that gives us about an 81% efficiency. But at the same time, again, it's a lot more affordable. Now, with that being said, the material is different as well. It's more of a metal-based material. Let's make sure we consult with the manufacturer of tankless that we're using about the venting materials that can be used with their product. Let's go on to the next topic. All right, let's talk about concentric vent termination. This is a concentric vent termination, all right? And what this does is it allows our intake to be drawn from the sides and our exhaust down the middle. 
The benefit of our concentric vent termination is that it only requires one penetration, whether we're going through the side of the home or whether we're going through the roof. One penetration through the side of the home really promotes a very tight install to where we don't have to worry about uh, two air gaps along the side of a pipe or anything like that. It makes the install, number one, a lot easier, a lot quicker, and a lot more efficient and really aesthetically pleasing to the outside. Now, on the other hand, another way that we can reduce penetrations to the home, especially if we have multiple systems, is the common vent. And the common vent is good for commercial applications, also residential applications that may require more than one system. And what we can do is we can common vent all these systems into one main header and send that main header out for distribution of the exhaust and the intake as well. Most of the time systems communicate with one another in a lag lead format to make sure that they're sharing time of run. One final thing for when we're using a common vent header is to make sure that we properly terminate our condensation. We do not want any condensation to build inside of that main header. So we'll just make sure we add an auxiliary termination to dispose of our condensation properly. All right, so we talked a lot about installing the system indoors and venting it to the outside. Now let's discuss a lot of our tankless manufacturers have systems that are designed to be installed outside. Now, with that being said, in the Northeastern area, it's freezing temperatures the bulk of the winter. But once we get down into the Southern areas, Florida, Texas, even on our West Coast, California, then we're in areas where systems can be installed outside and not have to worry too much about the freezing. And most manufacturers, when they do have external models, they do have some sort of freeze protection just in case we get that frost in the winter time. They also have recess boxes that look aesthetically pleasing as well. So that way, once we had that system mounted outside and you have it in a recessed box, that installation looks very, very nice and appealing to the eye. When we install the system outdoors, just imagine that, that closet that had your tank in there, it's gone. There's no, there's, now you have a more storage space in that closet. Your system is now installed outside, so you're not spending any money on any vent materials itself, right? Nor are we wasting time running the venting off the top of the cabinet, which time is money. All right, guys, today we went over a couple options on how to make sure the installation of your propane tankless water heater is easy, convenient, and most importantly, safe. So that way your end user or customer can enjoy the benefit of tankless endless hot water.